right, here we go. Gonna do some flying this morning. It's actually late afternoon, getting a late start. Plan on going to my airstrip, but uh, plans didn't work out, so. Here we go, it is almost 11. I wanted to get out earlier, but. All right, what's going on? Here we go, it's September 18th. It's almost 11 a.m. already. I'm not a morning person. I plan on going south about an hour and 45 minutes to my uh, training field to do some flying, but did not make it. So today's video is gonna be about uh, how I set up some of the checks that I do, how I use the RCR, which is a Robertson's chart of reliability, and then how I, uh, use my phone I got a checklist on my phone for all my setup my pre-flight um, and then for my mosquito harness I got here too so I've used my phone for uh, a checklist and I upload that into my Google Drive so I'll show you all that and then I'll also show you um, how I use my flight log on Google Drive but uh, hope you enjoy it rock on all right we are here at Swank Airfield. You can see there is a lot of corn up around the airfield, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. But we'll get her done. See my glider up on top of the roof there. Let's get this gate open. All right, so the first thing I'm looking at when I pull into the uh, airfield here is the windsock direction and it is blowing to like southwest south southwest airstrip see it looks like he's got some cones up here for some reason better check it out first decide where I'm gonna set up okay I don't know if you can see this very well I'll try and show you what I do with my phone so check my Windy app as soon as I get on site. It's called Windy. I don't know if you can see that. And looks like I got four alerts. And these are the uh, airstrips that I've saved. Uh, Galleon Airport, Swank Airfield, where we're at, Westmar, which is my training uh, training center, and then Richmond Dale, which is a uh, foot launch. Which and they shut that down so now we have to scooter tow fly over the ridge but uh i'll check swank airfield looks like i got some red lines that means uh, the weather conditions are good um, turn this down a little bit okay so i click on saturday and here's my wind conditions and this is reported from multiple multiple sites around the area there's actually one area not too far from here or one site not too far from here that reports the wind conditions and this is showing pretty much what that windsock is telling me this is more of a northwest wind coming out of the northwest and then I can zoom in there there's my wind streamers I guess if you want to call them it's coming across the field this way which is opposite to what that wind sock is telling me 
so being nil wind pretty much is down here in the in the bottom in this valley pretty much surrounded by trees and there's hills on both sides so it makes it a little bit challenging but uh that's how i uh check the wind on my phone i'll go set up my wind sock and see what the real conditions are like all right all right so i got the wind sock set up pretty much no wind down here there are a few thermals popping off it gives me a erratic reading down here really the wind is going both ways and this has happened to me before and i had a pretty uh rough rotor launch coming off that tree line so what i'm going to do is just kind of set up uh, do that video i was talking about and then see what the wind conditions look like i've got to get to a my daughter's soccer game at five about an hour away so um might not get to fly today but at least i'll get the video in and hopefully uh what i post on youtube is helpful to other pilots keep you guys out of trouble learn from my screw ups <laughs> but yeah you just seen that that wind's popping off and it's now it's coming out of the northeast okay so you saw that reading i was getting right next to the corn now i'm just as a test set it here in the middle of the runway and now i'm getting more of a wind down in the right down through the runway which is coming out of uh, kind of west northwest it's shifting a lot so I like that a little bit better so I'm gonna set up down here by the windsock we'll see if I want to try and make a launch out of this airfield here the corn is tall I'm liking that better. Looks like it's coming right down the runway a little bit more consistently. Once I get set up, I'll take another look at it, check wind speed, and all that good stuff. All right, here we are, Swank Airfield, elevation 1095. Yeah, I'm going to be setting up right over here by this cool old tractor. All right, first thing I'm going to do is get the glider off the top. What I try and do first is test the skeeter, make sure it starts, make sure I got the RPMs before I go setting up the glider. Because if the mosquito don't don't start, then I ain't flying. Don't want to waste any time. So here we go. Main 
battery, backup battery. Ready to pull it out. Looks like a good spot. Flipped up. At this point, it's a good time just to look at the bottom of your of your uh, mosquito. Just make sure that uh, you don't see any any issues. This is a good perspective that you won't get when you flip it up. So I'm just checking the uh, spark plug cable. It's secured good. Engine temp. We got wires, safety wires on my on my bolts. A lot of times you'll get cracks here on this uh, muffler mount, exhaust mount, and uh, this is a good time to inspect that weld. That all looks good. Landing gear re retraction. Got a, a heat shield around that because it does melt sometimes when you're flying with these legs retracted. That line, you probably can't see it, but this line here can melt. Other than that, I'm just doing a once over. Everything looks secure. Prop brake looks good. Belt tension is good. I don't see any leaks, no oil on the engine, so that's good. Foot plates are secure. Looks like my chute is looking good as well. Got the safety handles are secure. All right, I think we're ready to flip it over. So. All right, so we're ready to uh, get the fuel in the fuel tank. I'll go ahead and do that now, and then put the battery in, and then we'll give it a test start, make sure it's running good before we set up the glider. So, what I like to do is just cover off. And I would suggest putting your cover back in the trunk or somewhere out of the way. I've seen a video where a guy was testing his mosquito and he had his cover laying on the ground and that prop just sucked it up, split the prop, busted it all up. So just get the, any loose debris, get it out of the way or, or your cover, anything loose that can get in the prop. Foam piece for uh, protecting the uh, shaft. This has already been shook up from my drive, but it's always good to get a little twirl, shake it up a little bit to uh, mix up that two cycle oil. I'm running 32 to 1 as you can see, unleaded, ethanol free. I use, uh, I got it written here, 90 recreation fuel, then I use 0.5 ounces of octane boost to get 94 octane. I won't be flying very long, if at all, if these uh, this wind condition doesn't get more consistent, I probably won't even fly. 
it's getting a lot of thermals popping off this this area here. So we'll see. All right. See, I tuck my limit lines, tuck my limit lines inside the back right here with the storage. Those are secure, kind of get those up out of the way. And then I also wrap the connection to your tank, that quick connect, just wrap that in plastic along with your uh, cable for your fuel level sensor. Just kind of keep that cleaned up so you don't get a bunch of fuel dripping on the, the cover. And then I'll pull those off to the side. And I use my Zildjian cymbal bag, which is a pretty heavy bag. Fits the uh, tank just about perfect. Got a couple holes here for the for the uh, fuel line and your sensing line to go next. And I just pull that over like that. tank strap is installed. Put those back in there because those won't come out until I get the uh, mosquito hooked up to the glider. Next is the battery. This battery is a 14.4 from Swedish Aerosports from 2018. It's still starting strong so I'm going to keep using it. Okay, battery installation. Just make sure you put it under your throttle cable here, your mouth throttle. If you put it like that, you're gonna get caught with the throttle. So make sure you get it underneath that cable. I slide it up into there. And then the strap goes around. So there's a fuse right here. I try to put the strap underneath the fuse to keep that battery from sliding down. Make your connection. Tuck that out of the way. There we go. While you got this open, take a look at your strap. Make sure it can flow freely. From upright to prone, nothing's going to get caught on it. This looks good. Now you notice on mine, I took the rope, suspension rope, out of that lower hole and just put it on the top one. Made a knot, two knots on the inside here with a, a big washer so it can't pull through that back plate. What that does for me. When I, when I want to get upright, 
look how much travel. I've got another couple inches of travel so I can get more upright versus if you're in that first hole. It's hard to get really vertical more upright when you're uh, when you come in for your approach. So that's what I did with that. Okay, so I'll show you what I did with the uh, suspension rope. Let's see there, maybe. See that big washer? It's a two inch fender washer. And then I have that insert to protect the rope, the edges. And then I double knotted it and added a, uh, I don't know if you can see that zip tie. Just to keep that from wanting to unravel, un undo. That's it. Okay, let's get the prop put on and we'll do a test start. This is a wooden prop from Devin Wagner. Makes the props. He's in Indiana. Heck of an engineer. I just found something interesting. When I put the tank in, the edge of the, the corner of the tank was laying on the rope connected to my choke. So when I pulled the choke, it choked, but when I released it, that tank was pitch, pinching and it did not release the choke. So Checking to make sure my choke is off and my prop brake is released. No tension on this choke. Shut this thing off. Throw that where my radio goes. Okay, test for the mosquitoes over. RTF, baby. Okay, so what I like to do when I get on site, you know, once I get my windsock put up and it looks like it could be flying weather. What I'll do is I'll get into my Google Drive. I hope you guys can see this. Otherwise, this is a waste. 
and so I have a folder so it's hang gliding and the skeeter so my wheels wing then hang glider logs and checks that folder open that up first folder is site evaluation and then I have all these other folders 1a is glider assembly log those are all my assembly logs 1b is glider pre-flight uh, pre log and then 2a this is if I'm going to be flying my mosquito which I call her skeeter 2a is skeeter pre-flight 2b is skeeter hang check and then three is your foot launch if I were to launch off the side of a mountain or what have you that's three four is arrow toe hang check and then five is my flight log book so I'll go to site evaluation that's 2019 2020 2021 and here it is Robertson chart of reliability so click on that and this is what I might be able to put this on the uh, on my laptop or give you a snapshot on YouTube but this is the RCR So here's your variables, cloud cover, cloud type, fronts, shears, lapse rate, atmosphere. So let me jump, jump back. This is the sky. So those are the different variables in the sky. Variables of the atmosphere, moisture, barometric pressure, and temperature. And then temporal is the time of day, season, wind direction, which is a site specific. And then here's your winds wind speed, your gust factor, any crosswinds at your launch. Here's your launch and landing. Is it a hill? Is it a slope? Landing area? Is it trees? Is it corn in this condition? And uh, takeoff area. So that would be your, that would be this area here, your launch. That was your landing area. And then environmental. Is the hills covered? Um, your wind origin and visibility so I'm gonna fill all this out each one of those columns get a low medium or high rating so what you want is a high rating anything zero it's zero to ten is your rating so this will be your total score you divide that by two and that's your overall reliability and I just kind of created this, I don't know if you can see here, skill level required for a H2, you need at least a 75% reliability. For an H2, H3, I would say 65% reliability, H3, H4 is 50%. And I've, I've gathered all this information online off the uh, RCR. If you look up RCR, which is this uh, Robertson's chart of reliability, you could get uh, get more information if you want but I pretty much just did my own research here and created this for myself you don't have to use it or rely on it I'm just showing you what I do so any score of a zero reduces the overall reliability to zero and disqualifies flying for the day so if you have any zeros in this column when you're done evaluating your site don't fly all right so let's see if I can go through this here <clears throat> Cloud cover percentage. Uh, low reliability would be black clouds, gray clouds is in the medium, white clouds is in the medium. So gray and white is medium. Clear is your high reliability. So in this case, I click on that. Oops. And then I will score this. See, it's partially clouded it's not 50 percent but I'd, I'd say it's closer to clear so I would say high 50 percent I would probably score that at a uh, eight so erase that score that at an eight check all right now I'm going to do that all the way down through here I'm not going to keep the camera on because it's going to be boring but I'm going to go ahead and fill this out then I'll show you what I come up with at the end and tell you what my score is. Right now I just filled in the one, so total score is eight, and overall reliability is four.
So that's a 4%. I need to get up to around 75%. So I'll fill this out and let you know what I come up with. Thanks. Okay. So I got this all filled out. The RCR is done. And it's interesting because it pretty much matches my instincts once I show you the final score. So um, here, just from the top, cloud cover, I scored that an 8. White, about 50% cloud cover. Clear would be a 10. Um, I hope you can see this okay. Uh, for cloud type, scored that an 8. There's a mix of cumulus and stratus clouds. Fronts and shears, don't see anything coming. That's so scored that a 9, but with this humidity, you always got to be aware. Uh, lapse rate's a 7, medium to low lapse rate there. The moisture, scored that a 7, it's pretty humid. Um, I think I can show you if I go to 55% humidity, feels like 84, 10% chance of rain, and then there's your barometer, 10 mile visibility. Okay, so that's pretty much where I got most of this information. And then I also use the Windy app as well. Uh, time of day is one because that's, it's right now, it's, it's, it's 1230. So I could probably score that a little bit higher, but 12 to five is when you'll, you'll hit a lot of thermals and flying a mosquito in thermal conditions. I learned the hard way is probably not a good idea. So I scored that low season, scored that an eight. It's almost, uh, it's almost fall. That should be actually more like a six between summer and fall. So I'll go here, change this, score that to six. All right. Wind directions a seven. Um, southeast, south, southwest, but it's, it's also variable. So I scored that pretty low because it's not consistent. Uh, wind speed, an H2, H1. Max conditions is 12 mile per hour. Um, right now we're about five, so I scored that pretty high. Gust factor, five mile per hour, scored that pretty high at nine. Uh, crosswinds, let me get rid of that. Okay, crosswinds, from 90 degree crosswind, that should be scored at a one to five. And then as your angle changes, you know, more of a headwind, you score higher. Downwind scores a zero. Obviously, you don't want to try and launch downwind. So, because this wind is kind of switchy, I scored that pretty low at a six. A hill, this is not, no, no hill, scored that a nine. Um, it's a little wavy, but it won't really affect me. The slope, no slope, I scored that at a ten. Landing area, scored that at five. Um, just because here, this, this column is hilly and trees. So I've got trees and I've also got corn. So I scored that pretty low. I do have a nice airstrip, but there are some, uh, obstacles we need to really be aware of. Um, takeoff area, scored that an eight. It's grass and gradual, but I'll keep that at an eight because that's, I don't really have anything. Poor footing. Uh, a slot opening or open and level so it's not really open and level but it is grass and gradual so I'll keep that at an eight uh, hill covering scored that at a six small trees I'm calling the corn and these trees uh, as an issue uh, wind origin is a nine mostly thermal winds so once I do get up there uh, it should be good flying if I fly today Visibility is a 10 because we do have 10 mile visibility. So total score is 145. You divide that by two. Overall reliability is 72.5. So if you look at skill level required, I need a 75% or higher as an H2. Now if I was an H3, which I think I'm borderline H2, H3, I could fly at 65%. So this tells me that my overall instincts when I first got here, just by looking at the conditions and trusting my gut, that I was, I was, I was right. I probably should not fly in these conditions, to be honest with you. So that to me is 
reinforcement to my original thought, you know, that you really have to trust your gut when you get to your, your launch site, really absorb what's around you, what's going on around you and, and, you know, fall back on experience that you, you that you've had. And I keep going back to that video of my rotor launch and it feels like the same conditions. So I'm not going to fly today, or at least I'm not going to fly right now. Later on in the afternoon, fill this thing out again and, and see if your see if your score changes and uh, get up there around 75%. I, I think that's the safe score to fly at. So what I do with this once it's once it's done is I'll hit these three dots there, share and export, send a copy. And then I'll send <clears throat> send it to my drive. Click my drive. Go down here. Logs and checks, site evaluation. 2021 RCRs. Save here. Uh, well, I just got to upload it. So there it went. Uploading. Okay. So once that's uploaded, I can go to my Mac, get on my Google Drive, and uh, I'll show you what that looks you can like. See here, if you can see, site evaluation. This is on my Google Drive now, so this is on my laptop. So all my checks that I do with my phone as it relates to uh, glider setup pre-flight, mosquito setup, pre-flight, and then uh, you know the, the RCR, the site evaluation, they're all logged in here. And uh, those are my 2019s, 2020s, and here's 2021. So today's date, 9-18. Click on that, and there it is. I can just scroll down through there and you can see there's the score 72.5 so not recommended that I fly at this time I'll have to wait until later on where uh, where I can get favorable conditions or when I can get favor favorable conditions so that's how I use the RCR all right here we go we're gonna get started on setting up the glider and uh, I use I use my notes in my iPhone for my checklist and I go to uh, hang glider and so this is my hang glider for large power glider checklist 1a 1b there's my assembly checklist I've got a little checklist for uh, restrictions and requirements weather conditions minimum 8800 for my skeeter pilot h2 wind speed 12 mile per hour gust to 5 h3 is 18 mile per hour gust to 11 h4 25 mile per hour gust to 12 rca rcr complete okay so glider assembly checklist i click on that and this is all the checklist items i need to check so for glider assembly lay pack glider on the ground wing tips facing into the wind unpack battens assembly control frame and then i'll just go down through here so i don't know if you can see that very well but uh i'll go ahead and get started on that first on the checklist set glider up with wing tips into the wind behind the wings. Check. Assemble, control frame, and wheels. Control frame. This is your base bar. This is the wheels. And your down tubes. Alright, let's get these assembled. like that. Actually right here. 
sometimes that's confusing. So make sure the arch goes over top like that. So it stands up looking like that. Wheels first. Here. Just put this stuff behind the wings. Eventually, it all goes in a bag. Also, got this tie down for the nose. All right. Stand glider upright. So, for me, I like to get on this side of it and stand it up. Onto the onto the wheels. Try and get this the wings like that, so they don't cross when you stand it up. Stand up, check. Unstrap glider and open wings. bag for all my other covers like your wingtip covers. This is a, a Velcro pad. Now, unstrap lighter, spread out the wingtips. Short leg.
make sure that nose is level. So that king post be pointed straight up before you open them. Otherwise, you can get uh, you can bend those nose plates. Tip covers. Tension crossbar. I have this heel. Make sure your cables aren't wrapped around your heel. Crossbar tension. Heel cable. Nose back. And nose cone cover. Install remaining back. Wash out tube off. They're out of the uh, stove pocket. Sides. Shut the camera off, put it on charge. Okay, so bear with me. My GoPro is in case time, so I'm only got a few minutes at a time. So I'm all set up, got the harness hooked up, and uh, let's see what I've used here. This little And I've got this thing here is adjustable, you just pull on it's like a ratchet on a rope. So I can adjust that. So I'm ready for my pre-flight. That's where I'm at now. 
So I have a checklist for each process, really. This is a glider setup. And then uh, I have a checklist for uh, that was glider assembly. And then I have a checklist for pre-flight. So that's what I'm going to do now. And once my checklist is done, like this one is, what I do, hit these three dots there, send a copy to my drive, and then I want to upload it to, let's see, this is my hang glider. Here's my logs and checklist. Upload that to glider assembly folder. You can see I've already got some in there. So save here and upload. There. Now that has been uploaded to Google Drive. I can access it now from my computer at home and uh, you know refer back to it if anything were to happen or who knows what. So okay, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the li limit lines from my mosquito right here. I've got one for each side and they're gonna hook up into this adapter right in the glider so I'll be right back well maybe I can also show you once I have the mosquito connected to the hang strap always remember to pull the keel the limit lines these are coated steel coated limit lines eighth inch limit lines you can see they're connected right here and I just put some heat shrink on the on the outside here just to protect any sharp edges. I know the school of thought is not to use steel because if they did break, they're gonna get into the prop, but the likelihood of steel breaking versus string is not very likely. So I do have those connected down here. That's gonna be hard to see, but it goes down through here and wraps around the frame. Maybe I can. Show you. There, you can kind of see it there. I have a rubber hose going around the frame, and then I also have tension locked in with this zip strip, so it always keeps tension so it doesn't slip this this loop. Basically, it's a, a loop, and it's looped through itself. So that's how I connected it. All right, I'm button that back up and. So on this side, you can see there's a push button release. And the keel slides out like that. And this is actually an adapter for a aluminum handrail at work. It fits right inside these perfectly. So once that's pulled, I'll cover that back up. Probably should put this on the stand. Let's cover that back up and make sure that it's not pressing down on these releases. It's not. Get it stretched over those ropes. This is probably a shaky, too shaky, but anyway, that's what I do there. Okay, so sorry about the jumping around here. Uh, this is recording from my phone now. My battery, my GoPro died. But, uh, so I've got the limit lines hooked up see how they're hooked up there make sure they go underneath the rear flying wires and then again I have them connected right there a couple small engine planes single engine planes just came in so pre-flight on the glider and on the mosquito is complete I can take this flag down this pretty much just communicates to people in the area not to interrupt me so that I can have a safe and successful pre-flight inspection. And what you see here, this red bungee cord, I'm going to try something. What I'm having trouble with is on my launches keeping my nose angle correct. So what I'm thinking is on my run, I'm going to use this bungee cord if it works out to line up with the horizon. So as I'm running, if I can keep that line right there with the horizon, maybe you can see it better from here. 
see how that's gonna I'd like to see that line up with the horizon right there that will tell me that my nose angle my pitch is is correct that way I don't pop the nose or try to run and launch in a stall so I'm not sure if this is gonna work because I've got to do some test runs and I'll slide it up and down on these nose wires on the flying wires here and uh, see if I can get that to uh, get that to work I'm not sure if it's going to be too low to where it's going to be in my flying vision you know as I'm flying but I don't think when I'm laying prone it should be should be okay so this is my phone mount this is all metal and I just have an allen wrench to tighten it up here but uh, yeah this this won't go anywhere this is all metal metal bolts and then I have my Vario and my wind speed, wind speed indicator right there. I'll take the cover off when I'm ready to fly. But other than that, it's ready to go. I did install some wheels. So I think that will help with uh, eliminating some drag. And make my run and launch a little bit easier. Again, it's a little bit too thermal for me to launch and fly around today. I'm just not comfortable plus I have to be at a soccer game in a couple hours so I probably gotta tear down here soon so all this setup is basically just to film a video <laughs> no flying for me today but that is the mosquito harness on a Will's Wing Falcon 195 call it a day thanks for watching I hope this uh, was insightful happy flying